Let me ask David. David, what did you get? Any gifts that weren't expected? Yeah, I. This was a surprise. <laughs> wow. That's a, is that, that's a case for the new iPhone 5, that's isn't exactly it? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the... But it doesn't quite fit, the Sorry. new iPhone 5. Who, who, was, who was that from, then? Have you met my wife? <laughs> it, <it's>, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I... That, you can maybe squeeze... But look at that. Wow. You can't squeeze anything in there. I... Well, even if you could, you wouldn't admit it, would you? No, quite, exactly. <laughs> and, but she also bought me this. Which is... Wow. <laughs> Which is a stress ball. Do you think she intended you to use them at the same time, the two gifts? <laughs> it's maybe she may be just trying to keep me off her. I don't know. But it's <laughs> it's it's quite pleasing. That's Have a go on that. <laughs> 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 He's not really anywhere near it. Yeah. Jeremy, Look at that. Oh, Jeremy, it's like, it's, it's like being at home. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Jeremy, I didn't ask you, I better... Uh, oh, Phil's straight in there. Look at that, yeah, Phil's yeah, yeah. Hey, That's on your lift for next year. Yeah. Don't throw it in there. You're not going to... You don't practice keepy-uppies with them, Phil. Uh, Jeremy, well, do you get yeah. any lovely Christmas gifts? Well, I, I'm actually Jewish, so I, I receive nothing. But thank you for reminding me. Do you want a tit? I do, but there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. I like to think we're bringing the cultures together there with uh, an incredible breath. Uh, uh, let's get my first guest that ladies and gentlemen, it is the always wonderful, the fabulous Mr. David Tennant. Happy New Year. Thanks very much. Happy New Year. It's an exciting year. Um, well, it's lovely to see you. It's always lovely to see you. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Lovely to be here. Last time I interviewed David, and I, I can't believe it was this long ago, uh, you were still who? You right, were just yeah. about to leave who? Yeah. Um, and you were moving on, you were, and this was uh, four years ago, you decided you were going to move on, and it was a, a big decision, obviously. Sure. And I wonder whether... Uh, first of all, do you keep up with who? Do you watch it now with Matt Smith in? Did you watch the Christmas special, for example? I, I've still got the Christmas special to watch, in it, but, but I, do, I do watch it, yeah. I keep up with it religiously, of course. Uh, this year is the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. Is it? Mm -hmm. I hadn't noticed. It is. <laughs> and uh, I believe they're planning something special. I believe... I don't know. They haven't... Sp no one... OK, I know you're an honest man, so if I ask you directly, how, so no one has spoken to you about... No one has spoken... I don't know. What? I know nothing. No one has spoken to you. I know you nothing. You haven't had a phone call saying it's you, the 50th I'll anniversary of I'll tell you how terrified home. they are. I go... In, in makeup tonight... Yeah. I, th this lovely lady came in, who I'd never met before, and went, hello, I'm from the BBC. I went, oh, uh, hello, nice to meet you. And she said, I've been sent to, to, to say that anything about the Doctor Who 50th anniversary must not be mentioned on television. That's how scared they are. I don't know anything. I've got nothing to tell you. So they haven't They're sending you... out spies to, to shut me up so from David, telling you things I don't know. They haven't said to you, are you free? Do you have a gap in your work diary at any stage this year, for example? I have not had a conversation like that with anyone. Has anyone had a conversation on your behalf <laughs> about your diary? Not... Is there someone who keeps your diary who, for the sake of honesty in interviews such as this, would not yet have spoken to you about chunks of time you might have put by to visit Wales this year? <laughs> I, don't know if I'm... I don't know if I'll be going to Wales. I couldn't. So you're going to film it here in London? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, one of the things I always admired about you, and I, I'm just going to share this with you, is I've seen you, I've seen David when he's been in public places and has been approached by Doctor Who fans, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone... A, you get mobbed, it's unbelievable, and B, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else, uh, another celebrity, deal with it with such patience and grace. You, uh, you find time for everyone. Um, and does this carry on still? Because presumably there's a lot of kids who see, even if they're watching Matt now, they've seen you on DVD and they still think of you as as Doctor Who at some stage in his life. I suppose it, you do get used to it. It does carry on, yeah. It just... It just... Because people are enthusiastic about it. It's one of those shows that people love. Does it ever get in the way of filming? Because I guess if you're on location, I know people shout out and they will shout, you know, Doctor, or they will just shout David. Does, does that, has that used calm to, I, down? I, I think, for me, I'm, it, it becomes ubiquitous. It becomes part of what you deal with. And it's, it's not a difficult thing to deal with, because people tend to be very enthusiastic and tend to... I've just been doing a long shoot with Olivia Coleman. You know Olivia Coleman? Of course, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Peep show and... Yeah, and all these, you know, the, the Iron Lady and all these... She's a fantastic actress. We've just been playing... Uh, Coppers together. Okay, is this this is Broadchurch? This is Broadchurch, yes. Right. Coming on on this channel, ITV One. Lovely. Very soon. We're Coppers and we were filming around. This is Dorset, Bridport, and Dorset, and you get used to it. And people coming up, and it happens quite a lot. And you, you you stop thinking about it. And Olivia, 
was a bit surprised. I don't think she... She's clearly not a fan. She's more of a Matt Smith fan. And she didn't really <laughs> understand why people cared. And uh, after, a while she, after a while, it started annoying her on my behalf. And I'm saying, I'm fine about it. I really don't worry about it. So she, but she would go, oh, come on, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to have some time off. You've got to go and sit, have a cup of tea. And I was like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And everywhere we went, this would happen. Eventually, we were up on the top of this caravan park, not far from there, but it's it, very remote. We were filming at about six in the morning. It was completely deserted. And then over the top of this hill comes a little old man with a stick. And he sees us coming and he's watching us. And as he approaches, he, he, he realises what's happening. He realises it's filming. And he gets forward and then he starts going, oh, oh, oh. And he starts getting very excited. And he's got his little stick in his backpack and he's hobbling towards us. And he says, oh, I can't believe I've been, oh, this is so exciting. I've been watching you on television all week. And I thought, oh, this, this annoys Lewis. I'll just, I'll head it off at the pass. I go, I go up to him and go, oh, that's, that's very nice. So I he goes, no, not you. I'm maybe a Coleman. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. So, so it just keeps you, you know, keeps you in your place. Yeah, but that's it's, and it's nice that she got some attention as well. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh... and she deserves it. She's okay. very marvellous. Uh, so the next thing we'll see on TV, Ball Church is later in the year, I know that, but yeah. uh, the next thing we'll see you on is Spice of Warsaw. Indeed. OK, uh, this is on BBC Four. Uh, it's coming soon. BBC Four on uh, Wednesday at 9 o'clock, oh, okay. yeah. And uh, this is it's just before the Second World War, is that right? Yeah, it's between the words, the run-up to the Second World War. And I'm uh, uh, the, the French uh, military attaché uh, in, in Warsaw, um, who's also a bit of a covert agent. I, I'm the French between the wars James Bond, if you will. So you were a spy. It's kind of cool to be playing a spy. It is quite cool, yeah. Did you get to study spy techniques? Did you have to do any of that? A little of? bit, yeah. I had to learn to fire a gun. And, wow. Yeah. And is that, is that a fun experience? You enjoyed that? It's quite tense-making. Because somebody had told me, that the, the mark of someone who really knows how to handle a gun is you don't blink as you, as you fire, yeah. which is quite hard to do. Because yeah, yeah. there's a recoil and it's all, there's bits flying. And I'm naturally a bit of a wuss. So having to combat that and try to look like I've handled one before. To it, look cool yeah. when you're doing it. Uh, and I, I urge you to watch. I fire the gun, I don't blink. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a clip, before we look at it, uh, so you're wearing period clothes, of course. Some of the yeah. clothes in it, I've seen the first episode, and some of the clothes, they're quite flamboyant. They've got you in some quite... Uh, some the, quite... The, the uniforms are quite... The, the French military uniforms are quite, are quite nice. Uh, and then there's the dress uniform for, like, the ball sequences. With the red trousers, is that and the That's one? hard to pull off. Yeah. That's one of the suits you used to wear. I mean, that's really... <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a bright blue... And some clown's trousers and a little... <laughs> there it is, look at that! You love the little drummer boy. Yeah, uh, and that hat, <laughs> which you're supposed to be wearing yeah. at all times when you're in that outfit. But I put it on and the entire crew pissed themselves laughing. <laughs> so we had to play the scene with me holding it in my left hand. I love watching that kind of stuff from that period. Uh, the clip we're going to show you, uh, you're not wearing that outfit. As a matter of fact, I think in the clip we're going to show you, you're not wearing any outfit. Seriously? Uh, let's have a look at this. I didn't know they did that kind of thing before the war. <laughs> Apparently it's been going on a long time. <laughs> so, uh, you're busy all year then, you're doing, you've got the, the new thing for ITV coming up, yeah. you've got Spies of Warsaw, you've got the Doctor Who uh, 50th special to film. Well, I didn't say that. But you didn't deny it. Uh, <laughs> and, then, uh, and, and a busy year for you as well, because of course, I know you have Georgia with you, your wife is here this evening. Yes. And uh, you've got uh, two lovely children. I don't know if this is the right thing to do or say, but I know it's going to come out eventually. No, You're going to be a, he's going to be a father again. <laughs> wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry Thank to spring it on you. <laughs> How exciting. What a great year. It's lovely. It's very lovely. Very exciting, yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. not going to go on about this, because I know you're very private and a very private family, quite rightly, but I just want to say congratulations. Well, thank you very uh, much. Thank uh, you. I've met everyone in show business, and you're just about the nicest guy I've ever met. Oh, stop it. Okay? Stop I'm going to say that to everyone tonight, but... <laughs> <laughs> with you, it happens to be true. Mr David Tennant, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Thank you. thank you, David. The fabulous David Tennant, coming soon to the 50th anniversary. <laughs> Join me after the break. I'll be chatting to the fabulous Sarah Millican. Don't go away. <laughs>